Anjani, talk a little bit about, because they're in school longer, they might not have that free time that kids run around in the backyard or the way they used to, for example. Talk a little bit about um, how that experience has impacted your son and what expanded learning time offers. So the physical education every day or the gym every day definitely helps because they definitely need an outlet for all the energy and yeah. that is a big help for them. Um, in, in terms of activities for the evening, which is when they have the running around time in the backyard or stuff like that, yeah, that does get cut down. But then again, my case, because I'm a working parent, my son was going to a daycare setting since when he was little. So even then, he didn't have as much time in the evening. All of his activities were already being scheduled for later in the evening or on the weekends. So in terms of what I experienced, we didn't have to change as much. It almost went along better with what we were used to. Adrian, how about the middle school perspective? Talk a little bit about the physical activity and free time component that um, for middle schoolers who are in expanded learning time. There's no free time in a day. Um, there's really no downtime. You know, there's still barely time to go to your lockers. Um, but I think that you need to have every minute scheduled, especially in middle school. Um, there's a little bit of might be construed as downtime with advisory once a day, which is about 40 minutes. And that's where the kids sort of get a handle on some of the things that they need to maybe do. Um, my daughter's advisory um, teacher, there is a curriculum, but some of the time is spent doing things like looking at their each individual grades. Are they missing something? Um, do you need some help? Should we schedule some appointments with teachers? So. Those are the kind of things that maybe she wouldn't have done if she got out at 2.30 and she just left, and not all schools that my understanding has advisory, and she has that every day. Jeannie, you talked a little bit about, so you have several, ki several kids across the uh, age spectrum. You talked a little bit about um, activities outside of school, and you even mentioned some changes that were made town-wide. Talk a little bit about how you f make room for those outside activities that are not part of the school, but they are additional enrichment activities. And what you lose, but then what you get in expanded learning time, but then how th adjustments can be made. Um, so one adjustment was um, with my daughter's dancing school. Um, the dancing school um, teacher actually moved the, the whole class. There was five students from this ELT school that went to this particular class. So she moved it 10 minutes and 10 minutes made the world a difference. That means they could get there in time. It's in the city, you know, we have a carpool. We just, we did it. We, uh, moms got together and we made it work. Um, I really didn't have to do much adjusting because um, the sports, my boys' sports usually start around 4, 4.15 or 5, and there's a, where there's a will is a way. I find people to help me out, get, get them to where they need to be. Um, now, you said Whalen does have a kindergarten? Yes, uh, has, we do. Has changed uh, the expanded time in kindergarten, expanded to kindergarten hours. Could you describe that very br briefly for me and talk about um, how that works? Mm -hmm. So the kindergarten students go from 7.55 to 3.10. It's um, 300 hours above the, the district regular um, kindergarten day. It's a longer day, but um, they, do go, they do go longer. They're also involved in the same activities as everybody else. They, they still get um, the gym every day. They still get their special class every day. So they're still involved in all the activities. It's just a little bit longer day, and they are tired. Um, my little one was exhausted when he went to kindergarten, but that's the adjustment you make from preschool to kindergarten. It was just a little bit longer, and he adjusted fine. He was fine. It definitely seemed like there was more time for learning as part of being in the kindergarten, which has a longer day. Again, they had, they had centers. They had groups of kids working together. They had playtime, which was set aside. So one of the centers that their kindergarten teacher did was just Legos and blocks and games. So they would go from one center to the other, and once they had the time, and they were done with the three they had to actually work in. Then they got to go down and sit on the rug and play their games, and then get back to the teacher. So it, it went around in a circle, and I think that was possible because they had the extended learning time. And they just, it is a transition anyway from preschool to kindergarten, and the fact that the school is regular extended learning day from first grade onwards, it is a really good transition to have kindergarten be the way it is because that way they get used to a slightly longer day and going into an even longer day in first grade, they're they prepared for it with that. It is a change, 
they lose nap time, they lose all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it is a change, but they get used to it. And kids are very resilient. I think it's parents who probably take a little longer to get used to certain routines. Kids get used to it very quickly. Um, Jeannie, talk about what um, the Whalen School does or did to support um, the youngest children throughout expanded learning time. Um, so the kindergarten students, it's district-wide policy to have an orientation. They get one orientation in May or June, and then they have two more prior to school starting in, well, August, but they start in September after all the screenings done and the testing. Um, but they do, you know, they, they understand that it's a huge transition from either preschool or no school, because some students don't go to um, uh, preschool, and, and then to start kindergarten. It, it's a big challenge. But the kindergarten teachers are great. I mean, they have the gym every day. They have a lot of active learning, just like Aunt Jenny said, and um, they just do it. Having a school schedule that's more aligned with your work schedule, has that allowed you to be more involved in the school, and how do you value that? Well, going until 4 o'clock, um, certainly things like meetings and school improvement council and PTO meetings are at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So my work day ends at 3. It certainly works in my schedule um, to be able to be part of any of the parent groups that the school offers. So for me, you know, it works. 4 o'clock is certainly better than 2.30 in the afternoon when some parents would probably not be able to leave work to attend some of the, the meetings and activities that we have. Anjani, what about you? Have you noticed that you've had, um, talk a little bit about whether you've been able to be more involved in school because of the, the hours. Uh, when my son started here in kindergarten, the school was already in expanded learning time. But again, like what Adrian said, the parent-teacher meetings happen later, the PTA meetings happen later in the evening, at the end of the school time, which the fact that you come here, you can pick up your child and then go straight there really helps. Sometimes even when they have meetings with the teachers, if you want to schedule something, you can do it right at the end of the school day, even though the teachers have to leave. Some of them are able to stay 10 minutes longer, 15 minutes longer, and you don't have to leave half an hour earlier, an hour earlier from work to come to meet the teachers. And the teachers here have been wonderful. They've always made the time when you are available to meet with them. And the fact that the re regular day for the school goes as much as your work hours really helps with that. Jeannie, talk to me a little bit about some of the challenges um, involved in expanded learning time um, for students and, f uh, and for parents, and um, what are some of the ways you could suggest addressing those challenges? So some of the challenges is just being tired. It's a long day for, for my kids. They're exhausted. I try to have quick dinners ready. I get out at the same time, so I prepare accordingly. <laughs> and. Um, you know, they want to eat as soon as they come home and they want to relax a little bit and I give them that downtime. So that's how I address those challenges. It's primarily, like Ginny said, with, the, with how tired the kids are and how prepared you have to be for the evening time before you head to work in the morning, in our case. Because by the time the kids get back, they have no energy, they are a little more cranky, especially the kindergartners, because it's the first experience for them. It takes longer. The other challenge we had small challenge was my son takes piano lessons and his classes were earlier. But again, like Jeannie, we had to talk to the instructor. They had to move some of their other kids around because these are individual classes. So if somebody else agrees to go earlier, you get to be later, otherwise not. But everybody works together when they know what the reason is. Yeah, the school is going longer. You can't do anything else about it. People generally tend to come together to help out where they can. I will say a huge challenge is um, my daughter comes out ravenous in the afternoon. I mean, ravenous to the point where I have to have something in the car. What we do at our school is first we have a um, universal free breakfast that the kids have a choice to come to or not. Um, but we have two snacks at our school plus their lunch. So the morning snack is a regular snack time where it's downtime and they can have a snack. And um, the parent usually provides that one. Then we have regular lunch time. Our lunch time is 30 minutes instead of the 17 or 20 minutes that it usually is in a regular day. So they have more time to talk and they have more time to eat, which is nice. Um, but the last thing is we have a working snack. So the, the, the children are still working, but they, uh, the school provides a snack. And it's a healthy snack. Um, it goes by the nutrition requirements um, that are um, I guess by the government. Um, but the kids love it. We have these fancy snack bags. It's a 
it's the whole thing's a learning a process. So this kids come who count them out and they take an inventory and everybody either gets a snack, a snack and a juice or they cannot take it and they can bring their own. So it's a nice program. They love it. They look forward to it every day. Has the expanded learning time in middle school, do you think, prepared your daughter more effectively for high school? I think certainly the um, length of time, um, you know, sitting in a classroom. Um, I think the ability to take, because they started um, long block schedules um, just last year to coincide sort of with the school, you know, block schedule. Um, so I think she'll be ready from a time point, you know, time standpoint and from a, um, you know, electives. Is there anything any of you wanted to add about what you would want other parents to know about expanded learning time, about whether or not to do it? And um, do you feel like you've said everything you needed to say? I'm lucky enough not to need to have childcare based on our schedules. However, the middle school is a challenging age where kids don't want to go to after school programs and they don't want to go to daycares and, and all of those. And so for a lot of students to have school that goes until four o'clock where the age where kids can get themselves in a little bit more trouble is middle school and the hours that that usually happens is after school till dinner time, you know, this is probably a good, um, good for them. Um, so I think for some people, you know, expanded learning time days, you know, certainly help them. I think every family should decide, and, and there are options, there are a choice. So if a family can opt out of not coming to our school if they don't want to, there are, you can go to a regular school day school. There is that option in our city. I don't know if that's, you know, district-wise, between districts, but it is in our district. Um, but it definitely is a personal family decision that you have to make. Um, if it works for your family, it works. It works out, the work schedule and everything that goes along with it. If it doesn't, you know, I know some stay-at-home moms that chose not to come because they are at home and they want to be with their kids, and I don't blame them. If I was home, I would want to be with my kids, but it's not a choice for me anymore. Any kind of change always comes with challenges, truly. Uh, for us, again, seeing the good that has come out of the expanded learning time has been really great. The fact that the kids have more learning time in school, the fact that the kids become so comfortable with longer you know, blocks of time for studying, the fact that they have so many other activities that they may never get the experience of if they didn't have an expanded learning time. For us, for us as a family, that outweighed the fact that, yeah, it is longer. Yeah, there are challenges. Anything has challenges. If you can adjust with that, it seems to me as a family that the advantages we got definitely outweighed the concerns.